Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. We have a lot to get through today. So first up, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Spring Data Neo4j. Um, and we're going to build an application using this. And we're going to use Marvel Comics data. Uh, so my name is uh, Jennifer Reif. I'm a developer relations engineer with Neo4j. Um, I enjoy uh, learning about technology, especially uh, Neo4j. Uh, and then I enjoy uh, coming out and sharing that in various ways. So whether that's uh, speaking at conferences or blogging about it um, or any other any other type of format, um, I enjoy getting out and, and sharing what I've learned with everyone. So uh, this is what we're going to build today, just so you kind of know where we're, we're hopefully going to get by the end of the session. I do have a, a very limited time today, and I do want to live code. Um, so we're going get, to get started and kind of kind of dive in. Uh, but this is kind of the goal of what we're going to end up with. So we're, we need a, a Spring Boot application. Uh, we want to access this via a web page. Uh, so we're going to make it accessible uh, from localhost. And then um, we want... Uh, to be able to search comics. So you want a, a list of those comics to return uh, based on what you search for. Um, and so that'll all show up there on the left-hand side. You can see a little bit more information about um, the, the, the results that come back from that search. And then uh, we're going to look at some details. So if a user goes through and selects one of the comics from the list, um, they want to know a little bit more information about that particular comic. So you're going to see some stuff come up, uh, an image of the comic, maybe the characters that were involved, maybe who created or wrote the comic, um, the series, stories, events, and other, other relevant data uh, with that. And then finally, uh, we have a visualization of, of the data actually in the graph. So you can actually see how each one of the nodes, uh, each, each of the comics or characters ties with other entities uh, in the database itself. So this is kind of just the high level requirement. So we need to access, access it from a web browser. Uh, we want to pull the real time results. So that way users can search. And if data gets added or, or removed from the database, we pull whatever's current. So it's not going to be static uh, data. Uh, we want to retrieve the details and the connections of a particular entity to display all that information. So there on the, the upper right hand side where you have the details of a particular comic that's selected, you want to retrieve all that relevant information uh, that may not necessarily live in, in the exact same entity as the comic issue itself. Uh, and then finally, we want to display that connected network so we can see that information visually and how it's tied together. So just a little bit of background on this project. Um, why in the world would we choose Graph? Well, first off, it shows that connected data structure very well. Um, so looking at this type of data set or a lot of other types of data sets, you want to understand how and why your entities or your data is connected. Um, and this is something that Neo4j uh, handles really well. Graph data structures handle very well as they show how and kind of gives some more context uh, to those connected entities. It's also very easy for humans to read and visualize. So as you can see there on the right-hand side, um, this is just a very small graph of uh, people who work for particular companies who like particular technologies. Um, and we can kind of see, uh, you can see kind of my node there in the center. Um, and I have a lot of connections going in and out, but maybe um, you could recommend uh, someone to meet someone else based on they share a, same, a similar interest or Maybe you can say, hey, this person can introduce um, Dan to Jennifer. Anne can introduce Dan to Jennifer because um, <laughs> Anne is, is their middle connection. Uh, we want to pull that relevant varied data. So even though you have different entities, you don't necessarily want to go out to all kinds of these different tables or, or documents or whatever data structure you happen to be dealing with. We actually want to see only the relevant data that's connected with the entity we care about. Um, and then finally, uh, Neo4j works very well with uh, the D3 library to visualize that graph data in Neo4j, um, which is that visualization that we get on the web page. And we'll, I'll show more of that uh, as we go along. So why would we choose something uh, for spring? Uh, first off, it's, it's very simple and familiar. So you out in the audience here, uh, as well as um, anyone who may come across this, it's pretty easy for you to replicate all of this code um, and be able to do get up uh, and running with the same project. Um, also, Spring Boot is, is very good at reducing boilerplate. So I don't have to write a lot of that boilerplate code, uh, which is extremely valuable in a 30-minute session like this. Um, 
Next, uh, Spring Data has a ton of integration projects to work with a variety of databases, including Neo4j. And you can connect to Neo4j through Spring Data uh, with our bold HTTP or embedded protocol. So anything you're used to connecting uh, to Neo4j with, uh, Spring Data has that connection available. Finally, we want to create a nice, pretty simple UI. Um, I'm not a, necessarily a, an expert front-end developer, and so I want something that's pretty easy to get up and running with. And uh, Spring gives you an integration to Timeleaf, uh, which allows you to uh, basically run templates um, and build uh, nice, simple, pretty web pages uh, without too terribly much uh, involved there, which we'll get a, look, a better look at as we go. So the data set, uh, that we're covering today uh, is the Marvel comics. Now, unfortunately, it's not movies. Um, however, uh, the Marvel, uh, it's developer.marvel.com. They provide an API, and they basically just took all of the data from Marvel comics that they had uh, over the years and, and the history and just dumped it onto servers. Uh, and they made it a mad escape to the door. So um, it's not uh, overly well supported. It's not very easy to uh, pull into pretty much anything because the, the servers are somewhat unreliable. Um, but we got it in there and then we were able to uh, use that data uh, in our own database uh, in order to pull that and, and look at some of this information. So uh, just a brief look, uh, if you're not familiar uh, with Graph or relatively new to Graph, uh, we had to figure out some way that we were pulling all of this from a REST endpoints. Um, so they, they put, published it on the API and we had to figure out how do we want it to look in, in a graph. Um, and so what we came up with uh, was a uh, comic issue kind of being that central connecting node to everything else. We definitely could have gone with something like character or creator and focused all of the nodes based around that. Um, and, and absolutely, if our data model had cared about creators and how they were connected, we, we could have definitely done that. Um, however, we chose that comic issue is really what we care about for, for our use. Um, and so we're going to choose comic issue as being the central and then relate all the other nodes to that single entity. So let's actually look at some code here. We're going to build uh, pretty quickly uh, a, a, an application. So um, I'm going to switch uh, my screen here just so you guys can see. Um, bring up this. And I want to show this. OK, so you guys hopefully should now be able to see uh, my code window. So uh, looking here, we're just going to, I've got a, a basic project. Again, I can totally start from scratch on this. I can go out to the Spring Initializer, put in just basically three dependent, three or four dependencies, uh, and pull in a Spring Data Neo4j project, uh, download that, open it up, um, modify just a couple of very simple things, which I'll show here in just a second, uh, and get up and running. But unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to get through the entire application um, until uh, I had more time. So unfortunately, with the time we're in, I'm starting from just kind of a, a pre-built kind of starter project um, that kind of has some code already in there. And I'll, I'll walk through and explain as much as I can of it. And then we'll go from there and, and use that as our jump off point. So first off, uh, just the POM, uh, pretty basic. Uh, we just have the Spring Boot Starter so Spring Boot Neo for our Spring Data Neo 4J project in there. I've included Timely as a dependency. We're going to use that for our web pages. We have the web project uh, to allow us to access this over the web, um, and I've included Lombok in here. That allows me to kind of reduce my boilerplate even further um, and shortcut some a little bit of the code. Let Lombok handle some things for me, just so I can uh, better demonstrate what what the real value of these applications are. Uh, and then, of course, our, our typical dependencies in there. So we've got most of our uh, kind of entities in here already. We've got a character entity. We've got a few uh, annotations in here, which, which I'll cover here in just a second when we look at the final entity we're going to code. Um, and then just a few uh, uh, values in here are basic domain class uh, variables. And then, so we've created our, our domain class, our entity, and then we have a repository that's going to extend the Neo4j repository in order to let us access this information uh, from the database. And then finally, we have our controller, which is going to expose a particular endpoint, which I've specified here, and let us query different types of, of character objects back. So I can, I can do a, 
a uh, get all characters uh, and basically access all of the char characters in the database. So now to kind of wrap this up, we're gonna put in, we have our character creator event series and story entities all in here. So they're all there. And again, all of this code is out on GitHub. Uh, you're more than welcome to check it out there um, in various stages. Um, so our final entity is, is our central entity, the one that ties all of this together. So we're gonna actually create our comic issue uh, here, create a new package for that. And then we're gonna start creating classes in here. So we first wanna start with a comic issue. That's gonna be just a, a regular class. I'm not gonna add it to Git just yet. And then we're gonna start with some of those annotations that I mentioned. So first off, we want Lombok to go ahead and create our getters and setters equals hash code and two string methods. So that takes care of all of that for us. And I don't have to write that kind of boring, repetitive code uh, to you guys today. Then uh, we're gonna uh, go ahead and let Lombok create a no args constructor for us, as well as a required args constructor. So both of these are gonna, Lombok will create a, a con two constructors, one with no arguments at all, an empty constructor, and one with only the required arguments included, the required args constructor. So that pretty much takes care of that. It reduces our boilerplate down quite a bit. The last thing that we need to include is an annotation to let Spring Data know that this is a Neo4j entity. Um, so this is a domain class. Uh, Neo4j works in nodes and relationships. And so we're saying this is going to be a, a node type uh, entity in, in Neo4j. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and specify an ID field, as well as say, this is gonna be a generated value. So we're gonna let, uh, in this case, Neo4j take care of uh, this particular value. So uh, Neo4j has an internal ID that it creates for all nodes and relationships. Uh, very, very similarly to, uh, if you're familiar with MongoDB, they create a unique document ID that's that's generated as well. Uh, and similar similar databases do, do the same. So Neo4j, again, just creates that internal ID for each entity. Next, uh, we want to uh, include a, uh, another long, we've got an, an ID that's coming from the Marvel API. So the reason I wanted to include this separately uh, as, an, as an ID is perhaps we'd wanna pull more information from the API directly, um, or maybe we wanna do a lookup and pull more details in, or maybe we'd wanna go out to the API and just display and host uh, you know, the API itself and pull the content straight from there. In our web application, this gives us the ability to do that because we don't have to have to do that extra lookup. Uh, but by no means is this uh, required if you don't necessarily want their, the rest of their information. So next we're gonna create just a couple of strings here. So we have our uh, comic issue name, we have the resource URI. So this is the basically the path uh, to get to this particular entity on the, the Marvel API itself. So if you wanted to go out and retrieve more information, this will give you the full full path on that. And then finally, we want a nice thumbnail for all of our uh, comic issues. So we want to show that pretty picture of what the, the comic, the front page of the comic looks like. Um, next, we're going to add in uh, an integer value uh, that is for page count, which makes pretty much sense because um, our comics will have pages. And then this one doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, we're going to have a double for the issue number. Not sure why that happened that way. Um, that was just what Marvel gave us. It didn't like integer when I tried to pull it in. I, I looked and sure enough, it needed a double. Not quite sure how you would have a, a 1.2 issue, um, but again, that's the data we were given. So, all right, so now we've created our comic entities, but we need to start tying all of these entities together. So in order to do that, we need, oh, not that uh, annotation, but we need our at relationship annotation. Uh, which is going to say this is a re we have a, we have to go over a relationship to to get to a, this other uh, entity. So we have a type a relationship types in Neo4j, which basically says what uh, kind of context do these two nodes connect? Um, so how are these two nodes related? In this case, uh, we have a comic issue uh, includes particular comic characters, particular characters. So. We could have a particular list come back from this because we could have multiple characters. Um, and I'm gonna choose our, our domain entity character. Um, just to be aware, if you do uh, look at naming strategies, um, try to avoid the language types um, as we did 
did. So character conflicted with the java.lang character, uh, which can get really confusing. You'll probably see a kind of buggy import I do later um, that I'll have to go back and fix uh, in order to do that. So just kind of keep naming in mind. So we'll go ahead and do uh, characters. We have to tell it what kind of list we want it to expect. And then we need to go ahead and do this connection with all of our other entities uh, in our data model. So next, we're, we're kind of heading down on the list here. So next is creators. So our comic issues are created by particular creators. So again, we have a private list. Um, we have our creator. There we go. And then we're just going to say list there, array list. And then we need to go on down. This next is our events. So type uh, our comic issue is part of different events, potentially multiple. So we're going to have another list here of event and events. Again, quantify this array list. And then only a couple more type. Um, a part of uh, belongs to a series. So our comic issue belongs to a particular series or multiple series potentially. So again, we have our list value. Uh, we're going to give it there. And again, what type of list? And then finally, last but not least, we have our stories. So our comic issues are made of various stories. Could be one, could be multiple. Um, and so again, possible list here with story and stories and new array list. Okay. So that pretty much sets that up. We've got our, our kind of central entity now. We've tied it together with all of the, the nearby entities. So next, we need to go back to our project over here and create our repository class. So we have our comic issue repo, and we're going to create an interface. And I'm not going to add it to Git. And all we really need to do here is extend Neo4j repository. We want our comic issue here and long there. And then we can go ahead and start creating uh, our methods here. So in order to do that, um, all we're looking for, we're going to start with just a basic one. We want to find by name. So we want to find a particular comic. We'll pass in a string name. OK. And then uh, we'll want to have uh, potentially finding a fuzzy search. So if we don't completely match the search, uh, we might want to uh, allow it to kind of return what it thinks might be close. So find by name like, and again, we'll pass it a name, some sort of name value that it can search. And then finally, we want to do something a little bit custom. So just like with other query languages, uh, with other Spring Data projects, you can use uh, the query language, you can use the at query annotation and use the query language that fits uh, the database. And so in this case, uh, we're going to use Cypher. So we're basically saying we want to match or, or find or select uh, a comic issue, a node of type comic issue, with a relationship uh, here in the middle to any other type of node. And then uh, we're going to return each of those pieces. So the comic issue and the relationship relationship and the other node. And then we want to set a limit here. And this is to avoid the potential for someone to come in and return a bunch of stuff to their web browser. If you have, you know, billions of nodes or millions of nodes and relationships, you don't want to completely crash your browser with all that information trying to render all of that. And so we're going to kind of set a limit in there so that the user can't accidentally hurt hurt their their uh, their computer and their their performance. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do a collection of comic issues. And we're going to say this is called graph. And uh, we're going to give it a param uh, limit. And we're going to say this is going to be an int limit. OK, so that sets that up really nicely. Now we need to go over here, create uh, our comic issue service. Now, what this does is this kind of creates an internal uh, API. So there would be we have some uh, methods that are going that can go straight to the repository and access the database. We have some that might need some business logic ahead of that. Um, so you would need to kind of create an extra layer to handle a lot of that business logic so it doesn't clutter your repository class. Um, and so in order to kind of keep things straightforward and consistent, we're kind of creating this internal API where all of the requests are going to come through the service class and then determine, do I need to do business logic or can I go straight to the database? So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, 
So start there. And then what we need to do is go ahead and inject our comic issue repo. So comic issue repo. And we're going to call this uh, issue repo. And then uh, we need to, oh, the other thing I forgot to do, why it's complaining at me, is we're going to let Lombok create a constructor with all arguments in it. So that allows us, we inject it, uh, the issue repo, uh, it's going to create a constructor for us. So then we, I don't have to create that, that additional code. So now we're going to kind of create uh, some uh, definitions of our methods here. So uh, this is just basically saying, I don't want to allow users to write on this method. We're not even going to look at read or write traffic. It's only going to be reads. So it allows it to kind of funnel that information through a little better because it's not having to worry about a, a potential write. So first off, what we want here um, is we're going to define um, our get all characters. So our get all uh, comic issues. So I'm going to say comic issue, uh, get all comic issues. And then we'll just return issue repo. Now notice I can access find all, and we didn't even define that in our repository. And this is one of those methods that Spring provides out of the box for us uh, so that we don't have to mess with it. It knows, hey, if you're wanting to do a, a get all or find all, um, we'll just go ahead and give that to you. You can get everything that, that it can find in the database. Um, so that makes it a little bit nicer. I don't have to add that extra method on my repository. Uh, Spring will just kind of handle that for me. So now we'll go ahead and look at um, our find by name and we'll pass in our string, yeah, string name here and then return issue repo dot, oops, there we go, find by name, pass in the name and then here, another read only, we've got our, uh, this time, our potential uh, fuzzy search. So find by name like, and pass in the name of course, and then return issue repo dot find by name like, and again, pass in that name value, we're gonna feed it. And then finally, before we do the last one, I've got one other thing that I need to go ahead and just kind of set up. So I did live template this a little bit, um, that's because uh, it's, it's a lot of code and it's not, overly relevant to really building the application out. So what this basically does is that um, it is um, our D3 visualization that we're going to deal with uh, is expecting a certain data in a certain format. So, oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Character we want it to look at. Oh, and then we can go down here and do. Oh, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so it's expecting data in a particular type of format. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and format that um, and allow it to um, get that all ready to go and so that we don't really have to, uh, this is kind of that business logic, the extra formatting and, and things that um, aren't really vital to our, our application code necessarily. I mean, they are. Um, uh, you know what, I must have it wrong in, in the comic issue over here. Um, no, nope, I've pulled it in there. Array list. Did I pull it in wrong here? No. Okay. There we go. Okay, much better. And so this is going to format that data into this map that D3 expects, um, and we should be good to go uh, there at least. So now we can finally do that graph um, uh, method uh, finally. And so go ahead and clean that up just a bit. Okay, and so finally we're going to have our map. Uh, remember, we need this for D3 object. And then this is our graph. And we're going to have our, uh, we need a request. Uh, nope, we don't. Um, and this is just going to be our int limit here. <laughs> Confusing, too much. Uh, and then return issue repo dot, there's our graph right there. And we're going to pass in limit. Oh, actually, 
take that back. So what I need to do is 2D3 format, pass in the um, graph, and then limit there. Okay, so I don't need any of this. And it's still not happy. String object map e3 format. Ah, build graph. I forgot to let's try this again. So, nope, I don't need that. Uh, 2d3 format. Uh, oh, issue repo dot graph. There we go. That's what I was missing. <laughs> okay, I had to access it from the the issue repo first. I didn't have a a a, a graph uh, method here. Okay, so that uh, is much better there. Now the last thing we need to kind of put into place is our <laughs> controller. So we have our comic issue controller like that, like that. And we're going to define this as at controller. Uh, and again, we want our all args constructor. And I'm going to uh, kind of jump in here and uh, do our comic issue to kind of shortcut a couple of things. Um, no, not that. Uh, There we go, much better. Okay, so now we need to import a couple of things here. So this basically sets up, okay. So it sets up some of our methods for us. We've got our find by name, we're passing in a uh, name, is gonna call our issue service. Again, that's our internal API. So um, the last thing we need to do here is set up our um, request mapping. And this is our endpoint that then users are going to hit in order to access this information. So then they access the slash comic issues and then they can hit uh, all of these methods, uh, pass in a string name in this case uh, and pull back, go to the service um, and, and retrieve that information there. Same thing for find by name like, and we have this build graph in here. Now, this is basically going to handle kind of that limit value that we wanna set. So you can see, uh, it's going to retrieve that map string object that D3 is going to expect. Um, and it's going to call the issue service and call uh, the graph method. And it's going to say if limit is equal to null, then use 100 as the default limit. So remember I said I didn't want to overload the browser uh, with a ton of data coming back. So if I don't pass in a limit on the front end side, the user says I want to return this many or that many, then we're just going to set a default to only 100. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and let whatever the user passed in as the limit value uh, to be then the limit of data that's returned. So the last one we need to define here is our uh, slash graph. So slash graph. And then we don't need a response body here because we're not expecting JSON. So that at response body um, says I'm expecting a JSON object back, uh, just plain data, no big deal. Uh, but we're not. What we're actually going to do is we're going to use one of those uh, time leaf templates in order to um, get our nice pretty web page. And so what we're telling Spring is uh, that we uh, want to uh, return a string that is going to be the name of the HTML file we want to serve up. So in this case, uh, we need our uh, request param, just like we have here, required as false, because again, users can pass in a limit or they don't have to, um, and then pass in there. And then we also need the model. So this is what's used uh, for the, the uh, templating. And then we need to add an attribute to our model like that. And we're going to uh, call build graph and we're going to pass in limit. That should be ready to go. And then we need to return the string of the HTML file that string is, uh, that spring is going to serve up for us uh, when it does this. So last but not least, we need to go over to our resources here and we need to add that template in. So I'm going to add a directory called templates like so and then within that we're going to create a new html file 
We're going to call this issuesgraph.html. Okay, now I know you guys all came to see me write a ton of JavaScript and HTML and all of that wonderful stuff. Not really. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, copy in, basically live template in a lot of uh, that, all of that code. So we've got a little bit of CSS up here, um, but if you kind of look down through all of this, you can actually see we do actually, when, when someone clicks uh, on something on the web page, you can actually see we are hitting these endpoints. It's passing in uh, whatever they're, they're searching for name, uh, and then it's going to render and loop through all of those entities that are going to come back on the front. So if I've done this correctly, Okay, then we should be able to run this and hopefully everything will be served up perfectly. I won't have any build errors. Okay, so far so good. So let's go over uh, to here and I'm gonna switch screen and let me create a new tab. So what I want is to show you guys chat here, share. Okay, so hopefully you all should see this now. So if I go to uh, local host port 8080, you can see this slash comic issues. Uh oh, looks like I might have gotten a, an error at some point here. So I've got a bug. No, it's not what I want. Uh, it's cipher exception, syntax variable limit not defined. Well, that's no good. Okay, so here at param, um, I think it might be here. I think I need, I think I need it something here. Um, <coughs> let me look here. Request param. Um, Not defined. I don't see any errors. That's what's confusing. Okay. Well, just one second. Oh, good thing I have the code pulled up. So all of this uh, is published. Uh, and so you guys are more than welcome to go out there. Again, I have these uh, various uh, starter projects uh, where you guys can access uh, this information. Uh, you can pull down the project uh, if you like, uh, copy it. Uh, it's perfectly, perfectly acceptable. Um, so let's see that. Oh, this should be an integer. Maybe that's my problem. That might be my problem. Okay. Let's try to rerun. Hopefully this solves every problem. Okay, go back here and no. Okay, <laughs> well the code works. Uh, it's out there on GitHub. Uh, let me swap uh, and, and uh, show you guys uh, where to find that now. So. Let's go back here. Uh, oh, uh, there we go. And back to the presentation. Okay. So with that, uh, here's where the source code uh, exists. Uh, feel free to go out and check the documentation. Uh, we have tons of stuff on Neo4j as well as all the Spring documentation on, on Spring site. Um, uh, the Twitter DMs down there, you notice there's two. So we are both the founders of this project. So feel free to contact either one of us uh, if you have questions or just want to follow up or, or say how awesome it is. Um, even though I couldn't uh, couldn't get it operating for you today. Um, and, and again, of course, uh, please feel do feel free to reach out to me via email. I'm happy to answer questions um, or, or uh, further the discussion uh, there as well. So with that, I'm going to uh, take a quick look. I think I have uh, Hunger Game slides uh, that I will go ahead and leave up there for everyone. Um, and then I will 
take a look and see if there are any questions here. Oh, do I have an extra comma? Oh, hey, I someone may have solved it for me. Oh, correct. Okay, that may help that. Let's see if I can run this now. And if that's the case, then I actually will be able to show this to you guys, which would be absolutely awesome. Oh, it loads. Okay, hang on one second. Let me share this. Okay, switch screen. I'm gonna go to the Chrome tab, this one. Okay, so welcome everyone <laughs> to the, the completed application. Thank you guys so much for, for looking over my shoulder on that code. Um, so this is what uh, the application looks like. It is uh, running and you can see I've kind of put in a default value here. This is my, my favorite Marvel character. And, uh, so I, I, I get to be the one to, to write the application code. So I get to put in my favorite. So you can see the list of comics that's coming back here, the uh, information, the extra details that are being populated for that. And of course I can click on the different comics and get the various covers. And you'll see that anytime I change, I click uh, our graph data is rendering and you can actually hover over here about a little bit of a tool tip. So you can see there's uh, a character, that node is a character with a name of beast. Um, you can look at, these are creators, uh, the purple ones are stories, etc. You can even search for something slightly different. So if I wanted to look at just Iron Man comics, I could do that as well. So my search, my fuzzy search is working really well. Um, and you can see, again, uh, some of the information being populated. Some of the data, again, coming from Marvel wasn't perfectly clean, um, but uh, that's what we were given. So great. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for catching that. So uh, with that, then, uh, I will put back up the Hunger Games uh, session and then check uh, on the, uh, the questions here. Okay.